This is the 2010 uh, nuclear physics um, paper for level 2 physics. Uh, and we'll launch into question 1 nuclear medicine. Iodine 131 is a radioactive isotope used in medicine because it emits beta particles or beta particles, depending how you want to say it. Describe what is meant by the term beta particles. There's a uh, high speed electron emitted from the nucleus in a nuclear reaction in a radioactive um, decay. But the key there is that it's a high speed electron that comes from the nucleus, not orbiting. Okay, the equation for the reaction is shown below. Write down the atomic number A and the mass number Z for xenon. Xe is xenon. So uh, Z has to be 131 because of conservation of nucleon number at the top there. And A has to be 54 uh, also because of conservation of atomic number. <clears throat> so everything on the left hand side has to add up to everything on the right hand side for both the top numbers and the bottom numbers. <clears throat> C. Name the conservation principle uh, that you use to work out the atomic number. So yeah, conservation of uh, mass number and atomic number. Next bit, another useful isotope is technetium 99M. The letter M stands for metastable, which means it does not decay into a different element. The technetium 99M can be introduced into the body. It emits gamma rays that are detected outside the body, and these are used to make images of various organs. Technetium 99M decays with a half-life of six hours as follows, and that's the equation for it. You can see the, um, the gamma radiation that's given off and all the conservation of mass numbers and atomic numbers stays uh, means they stay the same. The technetium 99 then decays by emitting low energy beta particles. The half-life of technetium 99 is 2, uh, 211,000 years. Its decay is as follows. So there's the decay for that. I'm going to have to scroll down. Um, Describe two important differences between gamma emission and beta emission. Okay, I'll give you probably two of the major ones and then maybe a couple of others. So, uh, gamma is EM radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, beta is um, an electron, high speed electron. So, that has mass, and the gamma radiation has no mass. Um, no charge on the gamma, but there is a negative one charge on the beta radiation. Okay, I think that covers more than enough. You can talk about all sorts of other uh, things that might occur to you, um, that beta are particles, gammas are photons or waves, I just say electromagnetic radiation, but those other ones are fine. Um, you talk about the speed, that beta travels at about nine, nine tenths the speed of light, 90% the speed of light, and gamma travels at the speed of light. Uh, beta are less penetrating than gamma, uh, beta are more ionizing than gamma, uh, beta emission, uh, you can talk about the change of uh, the Z value, um, you could say that uh, beta can change the structure of the nucleus in a um, decay, but the gamma does not, um, and yeah. Okay, um, next part. Explain why the properties of technetium 99M make it ideal for making images of various organs. So I'll just give you a couple of points here. Um, there's the half-life, uh, which is short, meaning, so this is a, a property, and then the reason is that it won't hang around, so it leaves the body um, fairly quickly, so in about 24 hours you'll have gone through uh, four half-lives um, and that means uh, you're not having radiation sitting there continually eating away at the body, eating away. <laughs> it's not really eating away, but it's yeah, interacting in a harmful way with the body. Um, another property is that the initial emission of uh, gamma radiation um, is penetrating highly penetrating, in fact to the point that it will penetrate outside the body. So if it's absorbed or in, introduced into the human body, it'll pass through to be detected outside the body. That's pretty important, otherwise it's a waste of time. 
uh, trying to do, um, you know, detect what's going on. Um, another important thing, I guess, is that the gamma is not very ionized because it penetrates. It doesn't ionize. Ionizing, um, and this means it's a little bit safer. Well, quite a bit safer because if it's not ionizing, it's not going to affect DNA and uh, interfere with things like that. So that's three points. Let's see what other ones um, you could have. Uh, you could have that the intensity of it is high, so it's got a short half-life, means you'll have a lot of activity initially while you're doing the readings. If you don't have a, uh, if you have a really long half-life and not enough um, activity to do the readings, you won't get clear readings. Um, I said it leaves the body. Um, that pretty much covers it. That's that's the main thing, I guess. If we carry on to the next question anyway, because I don't want to hang around here all day. The half-life of Technetium-99 is 6 hours, we saw that before, 12 milligrams okay, of Technetium-99M is injected into the patient, starts to decay to Technetium-99, calculate the amount of Technetium-99 present in the patient after 24 hours. So there's 24 hours, uh, let's do this here, 24 hours divided by 6 equals 4 half-lives, okay, 4 half-lives, so we've got to do 4 times that we divide by 2, or, or go to half, so 12 goes to 6, uh, 6 goes to 3, and then uh, 3 goes to 1.5, and these are all in milligrams, so that should be the amount that's in there after 24 hours. Um, just double check my answer, is that is that 4 half lives or is that 3 half lives, then we've got one, two, three, no, we have to do one more, one more, four, so it's going to be 0 0.75 milligrams, which is equal to 750 micrograms. Okay, make sure that you double check your answers. See, I nearly got it wrong because uh, I had four numbers written, but I didn't have four decays. So you've got one, two, three, and four decays. Um... Do we have any other questions? Scroll down. That's it. There you go. Question two coming soon.